Jesus on the main line. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. You should call him up. Yeah, won't you call him up? Call him up. Oh, call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. Oh, call him up. Call him up. Come on and give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. We want the Lord to know today that we are nothing without you. It's in you that we live, that we move, that we have our beings. Lord, I'm nothing without you. Come on, let's sing this to the Lord today. In him do I move, live and have my Won't you lift your hands and tell them? Cause I'm nothing without you. Oh, I'm nothing without you. Come on, let the Lord know today. I'm nothing.
I worship and adore. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I, Lord, I love, love you. you. Come on, won't you lift your hands in the sanctuary? Sing a love song to the Lord and let him know. I love you, Jesus. Let him know that I worship and adore. Just want to tell.
Cause you've been so good. Cause you've been so kind. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. Oh, praise your Jesus. Hallelujah. with this it's just a little melody of songs that Donna McClurkin sang some years back I don't know why I just feel it in my spirit it's gonna go a little quicker I apologize but I just feel it in my spirit because you know what I got my mind made up how many got your mind made up I got my mind made up you could take the words off and I won't Turn back. How, how many of y'all got that attitude? I got my mind made up and I won't. Why? Because I want to see Jesus someday. How many want to see Jesus? How many want to see Jesus? Saul says, I've got my mind made up and I won't. Turn back because I want to see my people. I got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus. Come on, let's sing that again. I've got my mind made up and I won't.
go tell my enemy. I am Jehovah. when Jeremiah got upset with the Lord Jeremiah said I'd never speak your name again but every time I think of the goodness of Jesus Jeremiah said it's like fire shut up in my bones somebody say yeah yeah Jeremiah said it's like fire Jeremiah said it's like fire Shut up in my bones, shut up in my bones, shut up, shut up, shut up, bones, 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 shut up, shut up, shut up, bones, bones, bones. God don't need no matches. God don't need no matches. God don't need no matches. He is by him. Oh, God don't need no matches. God don't need no matches. God don't need no matches. He is fire, 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 Holy Ghost, fire, fire, Holy Ghost, fire, fire, Holy Ghost, fire, 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 fire.
know why you came this morning. I don't know what your reason is, but if you came to give God praise, look at that person next to you and say, excuse me for a minute. I got to get my dance on. I'll be right back. Now somebody give the Lord a praise. Bless your hearts. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. He's just good, isn't he? He's just good, isn't he? My, 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 my. Financial officers, we will come with the offering now. Let's give unto the Lord. You're in a good mood. That means we're going to give real good. Amen. 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 Let's give unto the Lord. He's been good to us all this week. And we're going to give as unto the Lord. Is that all right? Come, brothers. Come, brothers. Amen. Amen. As they're coming, everybody's standing as they're coming. Amen. I'm just enjoying the Lord today, y'all. I'm just enjoying the fact that he woke me up this morning. Yeah, as soon as the offerings on the choir come, then we shall go into the word of the Lord. And when the pastor is done, we shall go into communion. And that will be it for the morning service. Shall we bow our heads together? Gracious God, we thank you. We love you.
Yes, sir. Come on, fire. Thank you, Jesus. Well, he's all right, he's all right. Safely. That was a rough drive in all them two weeks. Is the new baby here? Oh, yeah. Yes, she is. Akiva, there she is. All right. Oh, there she is. I see her. All right. All right. Newest member of the church. Any more new babies here? Is there another new baby? Oh, my goodness. All right. Before the choir comes, I, uh, when I first started pastoring in Amherstburg, I, I told the membership because, you know, we were small and getting ready to get it together, and I told the members there's two ways to build a church. You pray men and you birth a man. So now that y'all are doing both, we're just going to grow. Is that all right? <laughs> After the choir, Pastor Paul shall come with a morning message. Choir, is, uh, are the children going out? Are they going out today? After the choir. Right after the choir, you can take them out. Yes.
God. Praising his name. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Jesus. Yes, God bless sir. you. Just before we go into the word, it's a little warm when you're shouting. No, it ain't warm in here. It's warm when you're shouting. If you ain't fanning, you wasn't shouting. Amen. But before we get started, this weather is crazy hard to determine what to put the temperature on, but there's a hotter place than this if you don't live right. Oh yeah, I had to go there. I said, if you don't live right, there's a hotter place than this, amen? But before we get into the word, I want to acknowledge two of our newest members, uh, brand newest, I mean, you can't get no more new. <laughs> Then these two knew, and that is, am I going to do it? And she stepped out. Where's Makiba? She stepped up. She stepped up to feed the baby. All right. So we have Sister Makiba's baby is here for the first time. And we have Brother Jacob and Sister Kirsten. Hold up the baby. Amen. Those, those babies are the newest members of, of the church. And we thank God for them. I did this on a Tuesday night, but just to acknowledge, I also want to thank God and acknowledge uh, Brother Jack. Yes. Could get my lips to move right. Is also a member of this church. Yes. Has been. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for them. Now, Sister Donelda has a testimony. I know she's not the only one, but she's the only one I'm going to allow to testify this time. But she's got a, no, it's not a testimony. She has a praise report. Yes. So I'm going to let her come up to the front and give her praise report. And I hope I can preach when she's done because I understand how she feels. So while she's coming, Turn your Bibles to 2 Kings, the fifth chapter, and put your finger there for a moment.
know you got to live right, but I'm here to tell you prayer is the key. Faith unlocks the door, but praise gets God's attention. For God inhabits the praises of his people. I want three people that need a blessing or a miracle from the Lord this week. If you need God to do something this week, I want you to jump up and praise him like you know he's going to do it and do it now.
Sister Walls, just stand where you are. Stand where you are. Just lift your hands to the Lord, Sister Walls. That's it. God says, I've been hearing your prayers. He said, I heard your prayers. And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Second Kings, the fifth chapter. Something happened, and now I know you touch me. I'm trying, saints. My eyes get so welled up, I can't hardly see. Come on, just listen to the music. Shout it from. Come on, somebody lift your hand and say, He touched me. He touched me. He touched me. Something, 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 something happened. happened. And and now I know he touched me. And he made me whole. To put this world in 
space it took a miracle to hang the stars in its place but when he saved my soul what did he do cleanse and he made me whole somebody lift your hand and tell the lord that took a miracle captain of the host of the king of Syria. He was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord hath given deliverance unto Syria. 2 Kings 5. He was also a mighty man in valor. But he was a leper. And the Caesarians had gone out by companies and brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. She waited on Naaman's wife. He said unto her, Mistress, would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria? For he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. The king of Caesarea, or Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took him ten talents of silver and 6,000 pieces of gold and 10 changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, I am God to kill and to make alive that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy. Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes and and he had sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me. And he shall now and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Y'all stay with me. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot, stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again unto thee, and thou shalt be clean. Now, when Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he surely come unto me and stand and call on the name of the Lord God and strike his hand over the place and recover me of this leprosy. Are not Abna and, and Farpar rivers in Damascus better than the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a range, rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do such a great thing, wouldst thou have done it? How much rather then when he said to thee, Wash and be clean? 
Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto a little child, and he was clean. I want to call your attention to this story of a man named Naaman. When I was studying my word this week, the Lord started speaking, and I said, Lord, you know, I've preached this sermon so many times before. I've heard the famous sermon by Pastor Amos Woods, if six don't work, try seven. I said, but Lord, what is it you want to tell the people? Because those that are Bible scholars already know that when he dipped himself after being obedient the seventh time, that he came up and he was made whole. But God said, don't talk about the end of the story. He says, I want you to go back to the middle of the story. He said, I want you to go back to the time when the little servant spoke to Naaman and said, now if my prophet would have told you to dip in those big waters that are clean, wouldn't you have done it and not asked a question? And said, so if he tells you to dip in Jordan, why don't you do exactly what the prophet said? My brothers and sisters today, sometimes when we're praying and asking God for an answer, we pray and we pray, Lord, please give me the answer. Please tell me. And when God gives you the answer, we fuss and complain because we don't like the way the answer came. We fuss and complain because God will speak to us through a little child when we're expecting him to talk to us through a great big king. We will complain because God told us what not to do and, and not to go to. And we wanted to do the things that we wanted. All we do is constantly come plain. But I came here to tell you this morning that before you can jump to the end of the story, we've got to stick to this part where Naaman was obedient and actually did what the prophet said. In order for a boxer to come to victory, they must first be obedient to the trainer. Before my favorite basketball team and best team in the universe before the Lakers became who they are. They spent countless hours in the gymnasium practicing, running laps, preparing themselves to play a game. My brothers and sisters, the victory does not come without some sort of work. But the problem is everybody wants the victory, but nobody wants to go through the work. I'm here to tell you there is a true statement that practice makes perfect. Many times when I used to coach, I would make them run and run, and I would make them do suicides, for those that know that, and I would make them do sit-ups. And I wasn't doing it, but I was the coach. And I was doing it, and they were sweating and healing over in pain. And one day somebody said to me, why are you making us work so hard? And we're not even playing basketball. We're exercising. I said, well, you're on the team because you know how to play. My job is not to teach you how to play. My job is to teach you how to endure. Because it ain't no good for you having talent, and the fourth quarter comes, and you huffing and puffing and can't move. And I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, God will allow you to go through some things not to punish you, but he's trying to prepare you because the fourth quarter is coming soon. You up here complaining, you bickering, you whining. You got something to fuss about. You got something God has allowed this. Why did God let this happen? Why don't you stop fussing and complaining? Turn the whole story around. Flip the script. Matter of fact, have a flashback. And remember that the same God that brought you out 20 years ago is the same God that can bring you out today. Stop complaining and do what he says. 
Woo! Deacon, we got some weak Christians today. We got some first quarter, second quarter. I'm, I'm preaching from basketball. Y'all stay with me. But we got some first quarter, second quarter Christians today. You're eager. You're excited. You got your brand new uniform on. You bought some brand new shoes. You all look alike. You're dressed alike. You even got a routine that entertains the audience before the game starts. But there's a problem with that because as long as everybody is with you, as long as everything is going good, you can celebrate. But what happens when you're losing? What happens when it seems like you're falling behind? What happens when you're like Daniel? You're praying, but nobody's answering you. My brothers and sisters, you've got to be ready for the fourth quarter. Naaman was upset that this man wouldn't even come to the door. I am a general in the army of the king of Syria. And you mean to tell me you won't even come to the door when I came to your house? Naaman said, why didn't he come out and anoint his hands with oil? Why didn't he slap me on the head or lay hands on me? Why didn't he come out and heal me? My brothers and sisters, the moment you stop giving God expectations is the moment God's going to blow your expectations. We come to church expecting God to do things a certain way. God doesn't operate by your way. God operates by his way. That's why Jesus said, I am the way. Some of you, it might be a little tight, but I'm going to preach anyways. It's Super Bowl Sunday. Y'all can celebrate later. Some of you in here wondering why you haven't got your blessing. You're wondering why you haven't grown in the spirit. You're wondering why you haven't gone to the next level in God. I'm here to tell you why. Because you are trying to paint a picture of how you expect it to happen. And God wants you to stop leaning on your own understanding. But in all thy ways, acknowledge me. He said, and then I will... Name and thought, you have, you, what nerve. You didn't even come out and lay hands on me. And not only that, for those that don't know the, the history of the Old Testament, not only that, Naaman, not only did he not touch you, he told you to dip in Jordan. My brothers and sisters, we hear so much about Jordan. Don't Jordan sound wonderful? You remember when the Israelites came out, they got to cross over Jordan. Y'all remember that we talk about Jordan and make Jordan so beautiful? I want you to know Jordan was nothing but a pool of mud. Jordan was not clean water. Jordan was a messy, dirty water. And Naaman said to him, man, don't we share the river of Damascus? Man, you could have looked at talk in our language. Why didn't you send me to Montego Bay? Why didn't you let me lay out on the beaches of sandals? Why didn't you send me to Cuba and let me dip in the water that's so clear and blue I could see my painted toes? Why would you send me to Jordan? Y'all ever ask God why? I got news for you today. It's not wrong to ask him why. Just be ready for his answer. You can ask him why all you want. Just be ready for his. Servant looked at him and said, now, I want you to listen to yourself. See, sometimes, my brothers and sisters, hallelujah, we need to stop and listen to ourselves. I ain't get no amens. I got a well and a mm. I would to God that you had a tape recorder of yourself. And when you got done talking all your mess, I would that you could go into a room by yourself and replay that tape recorder and realize exactly how you sounded. I, I watched Steve Harvey. He brought a woman back. And, and the woman came back and she said, he said, now you wanted to come back. I tried to help you the first time. What you coming back for? But I mean, I'll help you. She, she said, because I watched the video. 
she said, and I didn't, I didn't want to understand you when you was telling me where I was right and where I was wrong. I didn't want to understand all that. She said, but since I watched the video and seen how I was behaving, I'm going to come back and keep quiet, and I'm going to listen to what you have to tell. See, I want you to know if you would stop talking so much, you'd hear what God really has to say. But we, we too busy. You like a kung fu movie, talking and don't make sense. What are you saying? Y'all didn't catch that. They didn't catch that, mother. She said, name it what you fussing for. If you would just trust, did you not come to the prophet's house? Watch this. Uh-oh. Somebody say, out right now. Yeah, it's going to hurt. You come to church to be lifted up, to be filled up. You come to church to rejoice, but when you get here, you just sit. You come to church to hear a word from the Lord, but when the word's going, you ain't even paying an attention. That's Naaman. And she said, now Naaman, stop for a minute. You came to the prophet's house so you can be healed by the prophet. So why are you complaining when the prophet told you how to be healed? Ooh, this is good. I got to hurry up. We got communion. But it's y'all's fault. Y'all shouted too much. <laughs> and Naaman woke up. Somebody say woke up. woke up. I'm so glad we have moments when we just wake up. Yeah. Where we just say, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I realize that you've been trying to talk to me for 20 years, but I ain't been listening. Naaman woke up and looked at the servant. Now, I don't know what the dialogue was. All I know, my brothers and sisters, is from the time she said, why don't you trust the prophet? The next verse we hear, Naaman done went to the river of Jordan. Now, watch this. His first reward was because he went to the prophet's house. Your first reward today, my brothers and sisters, you will be blessed just for coming to church. Oh, yeah. The Bible says, the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of brethren together. The Bible says you're supposed to come to church. You're supposed to come here to edify each other and to lift up the name. Did, did you know, matter of fact, I'm sorry, Sherry, but look at somebody tell him you're supposed to be here. You stop walking around and expecting us to praise you for coming. You're supposed to be here. And then when you get here, you're, you have an instruction that I don't have to tell you. The Bible says, read the entire book of Psalms. It tells you what to do when you get to church. David said, enter into his gates with and into his court. Oh, oh, thank you. We always quote that, Sister Leanna. We don't go to the next one. And be thankful unto. Yeah. And watch this. And what? Bless his. Shame on me if every time Trustee Simpson comes and I got to say, man, I'm so glad you came, man. Thank you for coming. I'm so glad you was here, man. I just love seeing you come to church. Shame on me. I ought to look at him and say, hello, he's supposed to be here. First thing he did, he went to the prophet's house. He's supposed to be there. Second thing he did when he got to the house, he complained. Uh-huh. When you come to church, church ain't always happy. I know we sing it. You make me happy. You make me. Don't we sing that? Anybody ever come to church and you didn't feel happy? Thank you for you, you honest folk. The rest of y'all, I'm praying for you. He complained, but watch this. But then he heard the word of the Lord. 
I want you to know today, my brothers and sisters, if I don't say nothing else, the music sounds good. The music is wonderful. The Bible tells us, you know, praise him on the loud sounding cymbals, praise him on the high sounding cymbals. But that same Bible says when everything else shall pass away, there's only one thing that's going to stand, and that is the word of God. So if you miss your dance, if you miss your chance to celebrate in the music, whatever you do, don't miss the word. That word is so deep that you could be out on a street corner and somebody come to attack you and you could start quoting the word. If somebody comes at you, you tell them like Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. You can look at somebody that's coming up against you and you can quote the word and say, though my enemies come upon me to eat up my flesh, the word says they stumbled and they... When they come against you and they want to beat you up and they want to talk about you, they want to lie on you, they want to criticize you, you quote the word to them. I'm more than a conqueror through him that loves me. Go ahead, baby, talk about me. Go ahead and lie on me. Go ahead and make up stories. But my Bible tells me I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come shall separate me you old soft Christians you old soft saints somebody spoke to you out of term somebody looked at you wrong somebody looked at you cross-eyed maybe they was cross-eyed stop doing that you need to get off your feelings and give God his glory Let me finish. When he said to Naaman, go, dip yourself. After Naaman fussed and complained, then the Bible says Naaman went. Where did he go? He went to that muddy, muddy waters that he was instructed to. Sometimes God has sent you in the places that don't seem comfortable. Sometimes God will send you in situations that don't feel comfortable. Sometimes God will even allow some things to happen to you that make you wonder if God is upset with you. But I came to let you know if God sent it, then you ought to stand there and wait on the Lord. That's why Isaiah said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. He said, wait, I say, on the Lord. So here Naaman went down into the Jordan rivers. Y'all can look at me, I'm a priest by myself. And when he got to the Jordan rivers, the Bible said he was to dip down in the waters seven times. Now I know the Bible bishop doesn't explain what happened the first six times. But I want you to know that it was not as easy as the Bible makes it sound. Because can't you imagine? Imagine this man with this leprosy over him, dipping himself down in the muddy waters. Can't you see him when he dipped down the first time, looking at his leprosy and realizing that nothing has changed? Can't you see him the second time, dipping down in the water, look at his toes, and nothing has changed? Can't you see him a third time dipping in the water? His servants that came with him are on the outside mocking and making fun of him because he's dipping in the muddy waters. He went down for the fourth time, and when he came up, nothing had changed. But I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, if God says do it seven times, times you better work towards your seventh time because the same thing happened to the children of Israel when God told them to march around the walls of Jericho God said march around seven times the first six times they was laughed at the first six times some folk fell off by the wayside but on 
that seventh time. Uh, look at somebody, tell them, but on the seventh time, uh, I'm here to tell you that God will bring the walls of Jericho down uh, in your life. Uh, hold on, my brother. Uh, hang on, my sister. Uh, if you would do what the Bible says, uh, when he went down the seventh time, uh, the Bible says when he got up uh, and he looked at his skin, uh, the Bible said not only was the leprosy gone, uh, but the Lord had rebirthed him as a grown-up. Uh, for the Bible says his skin was as smooth as a baby's bottom. Uh, he was an old man but had a new body. Uh, and I'm here to tell you that's the kind of God I serve. Uh, he can take the crooked and make it straight. Uh, he can turn the darkness into light. Uh, he can take the crooked sinner and make him a prophet for him. Uh, because that's the kind of God I serve. And if you'll listen to the word of God, if you'll be obedient to the word of God, high five somebody to tell them everything will be all right. Everything. Will be all right. It was that seventh time after fussing, after complaining, when he was obedient. Somebody say, that's when. I told him yesterday at the open kitchen, ooh, I felt like preaching there, mother. I told him yesterday at the open kitchen, I said, the Bible says, if my people which are by if they would and if they would and what she say then don't don't we preach that bishop I mean that's the verse that when you're in high gear folk will be running on you and the preacher said if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then they get to real good and they say, then I'll hear from heaven. Then I'll hear that, you know, preachers be going on. But I got news for you. Ain't no sense finishing that verse if you don't do what the first verse says. If y'all can I tell you I was telling him at the open kitchen I was about to preach a sermon I said if maybe that's the title of this sermon look at somebody say if if you just listen if you just do what I say God said I will make the darkness light before you that's what he said what is wrong I'll make it right before you that, that's what God said but there's an if there and watch what he said and all your battles I will fight for you and here's what I love about God here's what I love about God Mama Riley when you're so down and you're so out and you feel like you can't move God's the type of God he said I'll bring I'll bring them by your heads close your eyes so many of us in here are just like Naaman we want something done Naaman had good intentions though he knew somebody had told him because that's why he expected the prophet to come out and lay hands on him somebody somewhere told Naaman what was gonna happen so he had good intentions but my brother and sister's good intentions can't get you to heaven. You've got to listen. You've got to be obedient. Whew. It wasn't until Naaman did exactly what the prophet said. Watch this. The prophet never did see Naaman. Did you hear what I just said? Elisha was in the back watching the Super Bowl game. 
and never did see Naaman. Did y'all get it? Today, my brothers and sisters, if you would just hear what God is saying, while your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, he's talking to you right now. God's talking to you that's not saved, and he's saying, why don't you give me a chance? Why don't you let me come in? I'm going to change your life. You don't have to do anything but accept me. That's what God is saying. Then then God's also talking to somebody else. He's saying, why don't you come on and get your business straight with me? God said, why don't you come on? I see you. I know you're hurt. I know your pain. I want to heal you. I want to deliver you. But you've got to come and get your business straight. Lastly, you're already saved, but you're in struggle. You're struggle. You're struggle. You're struggle. You're struggle. God's saying, if you would just trust me, stop complaining, stop whining, stop begging. Oh my, just got that word right there. God said, stop begging. I heard you the first time. Trust me. Trust me. If you fall in that category today, I want you to raise your hand where you are real quick, real quick. Real quick. I see you. God says, trust me. I see you. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. I see you. Trust me. Trust me. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to work it out. I'm going to make it right. I'm going to turn it around. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. You, you're, you're leading me not to beg. You're leading me not, not to plead, Lord. You've opened the opportunity, and those that raise their hands... I thank you for them, and I pray now that you work it out, you turn it around, you fix it for them. Give them a mind to know. Give them a peace of mind to know 